in this next test, we're actually going to calculate a standard deviation for, well, whatever we want, but in this case we're going to do it by, say, customer number, salesperson number, and product number. So you have a lot of variations here, and, and you really could select a lot of different types of fields here in this calculation. Uh, the way the, the standard deviation will be calculated, because there are all of these different types of uh, record types that we could be going on, is we need to do a loop, and, and basically loop through the file, and w with that loop, each time that we're looping through, we kind of change what we're doing. So again, let, let's just assume for a second that we're going to use salesperson number, and in, in product number or inventory number. We're going to add those together and we're going to say for each one of those different types of, of salesperson number plus product number, for each time that that happens, we're actually going to calculate a standard deviation for that set of information and we're going to align that data back to the original file that we had. So, you know, in essence you could calculate a two or three times standard deviation and then align that back to the detailed records in, in this case, the order file so that you can find situations where there are order prices that are greater than two or three times the standard deviation. So we're trying to show you this here on this slide where we have on, on the right top there the actual you know, setup of the loop and uh, the loop itself is going to count the number of records in the table. It's going to save that as total record equal count one and then it's going to start with record one and it's going to say we're going to do this standard deviation test that we just talked about kind of looping through while the record number is less than the actual total record number like we said and that counter that vrec is going to be added or assigned a additional record or count number each time that it goes through this test so again it's going to be a little bit easier to see this in ACL but I wanted to give you the overview of how this test is going to create a standard deviation and align it back to the detailed transactions As we head into ACL, we can take a look at how this script is working. First off, we're going to take a look at the particular fields that we're using. Again, location is being used here, could be salesperson, you could even select customer number or any other number. This one would be the actual product number, prod number here, and then this is the unit sales price here that you're selecting. So using, or, or first sorting on that information, and then summarizing on that information, notice we're not using a pre-sort here, but, but we could, uh, in essence. With this, we're able to get, by location and product number, the sales price that is the highest sales price being used for that location and product number. We're then counting that file, that summarized file, and we're then doing the batch in this case, or do script, or batch in, in this case. Uh, either one works, given ACL is backward compatible. It's going to do the loop PRI script. So let me hold this script for a second, and then I'm going to open up the loop PRI script. In the loop PRI script, we're going to immediately take a look or extract that summarized information to a file called temp sum. And once temp sum is open, we're going to count that file. Now, remember this is the summarized file. So the summarized file will have just those records summarized by either location and product number or salesperson and product number, and it's going to then count those records it's going to count them so that we can get that total record count and then it's going to set the first record to be one so now it's going to say let's do the standard PRI uh, which is the the uh, standard deviation script while the total records in this case of all of those summarized records is I guess in this case greater than the count that we're working on. So it's going to loop through that summarized on location and product number file and it's going to then, let's kind of hold this one, 
and we'll go to the standard PRI script. And once again, we're going to open up uh, the, the temp sum table, which again is the summarized table. We're going to locate record VREC, so it could be record number five, let's say, that it's up to. And at record number five, sum summarized, it's going to take that location and product number, and then that location and product number is going to be held in the memory. It's now going to go back to that originally sorted file that we created. Doesn't have to be sorted, but we, in this case, we're we're going to go on the sorted file. Um, and I, I guess, in, in many ways, it may be useful that it is sorted so that, from a statistics point of view, it makes it easy for ACL to go through the file, find where it needs to go to, and then quickly calculate the statistics on just that set of records. So. What I'm then doing is I'm calculating the statistics when the location and product number equals what I then set this VBRK to. Now I have the words STD at the end of this and that will calculate the standard deviation for this particular statistics command. The standard deviation, one, is a variable that's calculated whenever statistics is run. So if you run statistics, it, it creates a variable up here in the variable section called standard dev one, and it creates an average called average one. We're going to save those as variables a sec as a second here so that we can then quickly use them in this extraction point. So now back to that summarized file, it's going to open up that summarized file. It's going to locate record VREC, in this case, you know, record five. And, and then it's going to extract the fields, location, product number. But now it's going to add the count and the V standard, which is the standard deviation, and the V average, which is the average, to a file called standard done. And it's going to do that if the location plus product number equals V break and it's going to append to that file. So I mean it, there's a lot going on here but you know if you break it down into each little piece it, it does make a lot more sense. Then it's going to assign the V record number equal to V record plus one so I'm going to move the counter forward one so that when I loop back and, and go back to my, the, my loop PRI table it's then going to go back and say, okay, is that record number now six instead of five? Is it less than the total records, which let's just say is a thousand? Yes, it is. Let's keep then going with the standard PRI, go back to the script, and kind of run through this whole thing again. So, you know, there's a lot going on here for sure. Uh, again, if you break it down into the components, though, it's not too bad. And this will then loop through for every sequence of location and product number, or in this case, customer number, product number, salesperson, product number. It's going to calculate the standard deviation. It's going to align it up to a, a final table so that you have all the information you need with regards to the summary uh, of that uh, file. And last but not least, when we, we head back here to the price var, Okay, so now it's doing that batch loop PRI, which does the batch standard PRI, and then it kind of comes back to this uh, particular uh, table. And once done, it's then going to, in essence, kind of delete all of the other uh, fields and, and files that, that really need to be there, in this case, the variables as well as the files here. And uh, this is probably a good place just to quickly note for deleting files, you want to delete not only the input file definition, which is the format, delete format, sorted, as well as the actual .fil on your computer. And that's what this delete command will do. So let's run this script and just close everything out. So we'll just kind of start over here and I'll run the PRI VAR script and we will then select the order and ship file and we'll select the unit price, the salesperson, and the inventory number. And at this point, again, it's, it's doing some pretty fast calculations here, as you can see. As it's going through and calculating that statistics for every sequence of a salesperson and product number, and I believe that there are about 1,500 of them, so we're going to let this run for a second and we'll get right back to it. 
and we're back and and now we're taking a look at situations where products are selling at prices well above the average again because this test goes through about 1500 calculations or so standard deviation it will uh, take a few minutes to run it it probably take about uh, three to five minutes to run for for this case and again if you have much much larger files with much more sequences of salesperson and product number you might want to consider that when running this test and that this final one uh, shows the order price greater than two times the standard deviation where we took the average for this particular salesperson inventory number we added two standard deviations to it and then align that to the order price and, and you'll see that every one of these order prices exceeds the standard deviation again out of about 1600 sequences we only have about 57 that we need to look at in this analysis and again a very effective test that goes beyond just doing an average but also taking a look at that bell curve that is used at the the normal curve that everyone gets used to but now we're going out for two standard deviations if you did want to change that to three standard deviations you're more than welcome to go into the loop PRI and change this particular statement to be three or four or whatever you'd like it to be well three would probably be the maximum you'd ever want to use uh, but again you, you could even calculate multiple ones of these fields so we could actually define maybe you know one times standard deviation and in that case it would really just be this you know one times that standard deviation just make sure that you carry it through to any sort of extract statement below like we're doing here and uh, again uh, just take make sure it kinda gets carried below if you do add that statement if you don't add it and just kinda stick with what you got with the, the two times it should work perfectly for you